Hello everyone, this is Reza from Red Hat, and uh, today I'm going to talk about direct query connection in Power BI. What is direct query connection? What data sources you can use direct query for? What are scenarios to use direct query? What scenarios you should not use direct query? And uh, if you are using direct query, how you can make that experience better? Let's check this all out in this video. Okay, let's first look at what is direct query and how you can uh, use it. Um, I enable my zooming tool. Um, this is Power BI Desktop. As you can see in Power BI Desktop, I have uh, three tabs, the report tab, uh, data tab, and the model tab. Now I'm going to connect to SQL Server, which is one of the data sources that supports direct query. Um, and uh, in these data sources that supports direct query, usually you see an option to choose direct query as the uh, option for data source. I previously explained about import data in another video, so go and check that video if you want to know what is that option. Uh, let's say I'm connecting to my local server, and uh, that dot means local SQL Server database server, with direct query option. Uh, when I click on OK, this experience is pretty much similar to what you do in the import data. That means it will bring the navigator window. Um, you need to, of course, log into that database. But after logging into that database, I'll see my databases that I have access to. Uh, then I can expand one of these and select those tables that I want to get data from, let's say customer table in this case, and uh, fact table, right? I select these and I click on load. So pretty much similar to experience that you have with import data. However, this time is direct query. It means that the data will not be loaded into Power BI. You see that this process was much faster than if you do use that with import data because import data imports the data into the memory of Power BI. This mode doesn't import the data. It just imports metadata, which means uh, table names, uh, column names, all the information about tables and columns, but not actually the data. As you can see in the left hand side, I don't really have the data tab anymore. I just have the report tab and relationship tab because there is no data in Power BI now. I can go to the relationship tab, I can um, decide what the relationship is, change it, what, uh, do whatever I want, but I cannot see the data because data is not here. Down uh, below in the Power BI desktop window, it shows me that also the storage mode of this uh, model is direct query. That means everything is sourced direct query. Now, using direct query, I can still do my visualization. Like, for example, I can bring sales amount here and it shows me the sales value. But uh, when I bring it, usually it takes a little bit slower because it sends the query all the way to the database and the result comes back. Uh, now, this was fast because uh, the database, the sample database that I have is a small, but usually direct query is much fat, much slower than the import data. With every changes, it sends the query back into the database. Now, just to show you that what that looks like, I open SQL Profiler, which is one of the ways that I can track SQL queries sent to the database. Um, just note that SQL Profiler is not needed for this purpose. I'm just showing to you that there is a query behind the scene going on. Um, so I track queries sent to my local server coming from Power BI Desktop. Okay, and then I start slicing and dicing here. Let's say, for example, uh, this is sales amount. I would do sales amount by education. And as soon as I bring it, it sends a query to the database. I see that query behind the scene running over here, right? So it automatically generates the query, it sends it to the database, it gets the result back. If I do any other changes, it will be another query. Like for example, if I bring that to, now I see that another query is sent to the database. So it will be a query sent to the database for every combination of uh, options. And this is just one visual. Imagine that if I have like multiple visuals, it will be multiple queries sent to the database for every uh, visual. If I have like six visuals in my page, it would be six queries sent to the database. So direct query can be slow because it is sending queries to the data source and get the result back. However, 
because there is no data stored in the Power BI file, um, you don't have any limitation on the size of Power BI file because one of the limit one of the limitations that you use, you have when you use import data is the size of file. With Power BI Pro, each file can be only up to one gigabyte of the size, compressed, of course. I explained in the other video how it works. With premium 10 gigabyte at the moment, with Power BI Report Server 2 gigabyte, with this model, direct query, no limitation at all. You can do whatever you want, uh, petabytes of data, it works perfectly fine. However, the performance is not as great as the other one. Now, you might ask what are uh, data sources that you can use direct query for. Uh, this link, which you can find it down below in the uh, links and references shows all data sources that supports direct query in Power BI. Um, this list includes mostly database systems, SQL Server, Oracle, um, SAP HANA. Uh, most of these uh, systems supports direct query and this list gradually updates. And uh, one thing that you have to notice is that these sources also support um, import data. So if you use SQL Server, it doesn't mean that you have to use direct query. You can use direct query if the size of data is large, otherwise you can use import data. So most of these data sources are supporting import data and they are also supporting direct query, right? And uh, keep an eye on this list because it gets updated gradually. Um, so what are uh, limitations of direct query? Uh, so there are some limitations in designing the model. For example, you see that first of all, you don't see the data tab in direct query. Uh, there is no data tab. As, um, there is no data tab as you can see in this section. So that part is missing. Uh, but that also means that you can't do almost everything here. So there are things that you cannot do. If you do that, this will change to be mixed mode. And that is another mode that I will talk about that later, uh, which is like more enhanced version of direct query. Actually, from the time that that mode, mixed mode or composite model introduced, direct query become almost like um, never to be used by itself. Direct query these days are used only in composite model solutions because it makes it much better. But let me explain the limitations of direct query. And if you go to Power Query, in Power Query, you can apply changes, but most of these changes, um, like for example, if I uh, apply a change here, like for example, if I create a group, um, something like that, or, or any, anything like that, and then I say close and apply, uh, this will um, apply those changes, of course. It is a still direct query mode, but if I make a change that is not supported to, um, this error is because I removed that uh, column, of course. If I apply a change which is not supported in the conversion of this query to SQL query, because this behind the scene is still generates a query, that change compared, uh, change to be a group change. If my change is not like that, then it won't actually allow me to, um, to, to do that. When I say close and apply, it will tell me that uh, this change cannot be applied in the direct query data source. So your power query is also limited. Your SQL server, um, sorry, your um, calculated columns and things like that are also limited. So you have a lot of limitations in the way that uh, this works. Uh, performance of your model is another important aspect. Imagine you have a report like this. This report has one, two, three, four, five visuals. And for, with every change, with every selection of a visual, it sends a queries. Uh, it sends actually five queries to the data source. Uh, so each visual sends one query, right? Uh, so you have to take two things into consideration. First, your data source should be uh, performing uh, very fast. Uh, this is like two different database tables. Each has like 48 million records. Uh, so a pretty large uh, database table. Each has 48 million records. Now, uh, when I just do select some from this table, which is usually what you have in a visual like this, sum of sales, you are actually doing behind the scene this query, right? Uh, this normally takes four minutes and four seconds right, for just querying such a thing. And that is only one of the uh, 
uh, one of the visuals in that page, which is like only uh, one fifth of all uh, scenario. Uh, but if I run it on a database which is uh, optimized, you can see that this runs on less than a second, right? This database table is optimized with column store clustered index and things like that, which is not what I'm going to talk about in this uh, video. Uh, what I'm saying behind the scene is that you have to make sure that your database server, whatever data source is, is performing fast. Otherwise, direct query is no good at all. Uh, there is no point for the users to wait for like four minutes for one visual to return something. Uh, another important aspect for uh, performance tuning your direct query solution is using query reduction, very useful option. Query reduction means that if you have, a, let's say, uh, a visual page like this, if you have a visual page that has a number of charts, when you click on a slicer, usually automatically with every selection of a slicer, uh, these charts will change, the query will be sent to the data source. But what if you want to select multiple items? That means, for example, you select 2012, everything changed, query sent to the database. 2013, everything changed, query sent to the database. However, if you can add an apply button like this, you can do whatever selection you want first and then say apply, then this will send all queries to the data source. It's called query reduction, much better for uh, reducing the number of queries sent to the data source and as a result it would be much faster of course. Uh, where you do this configuration in file options and settings options under current file you have a query reduction configuration in the query reduction, you, there are a number of things you can uh, do. For example, for slicers, you can add an apply button. For filters, you can add an apply button. I highly recommend this. And also, if you don't want the uh, cross highlighting filtering to be enabled, that means when you click on a one chart, it uh, slice and dice other charts, you can disable it. But most of the time you want this functionality anyway. If you don't need that, you can disable it. This will improve the performance of your uh, Power BI direct query solution as well. Okay, so you learned about direct query, you learned about how to make the performance of direct query better, you learned about how to use direct query, what are data sources that you can use direct query. Now you might think that, okay, um, what are scenarios that I would use direct query and what are scenarios that I do not use direct query. Direct query is used for large data sources. No matter what the size of data is, you can load that data into Power BI. Uh, you can actually use Power BI to visualize that. So there is a misconception. People think that Power BI is good for only small visuals, uh, sorry, small data sets. No, that's not true. Power BI works with large data sets um, perfectly fine. Uh, the only thing is that you probably need to choose another type of connection. Uh, with Direct Query, you don't need to do refresh your data because it's directly connected to the database. Every time I click on a slicer, every time I change something, every time I bring a new visual, uh, all of these actions will raise actually a query to the data source. So as a result, I always have the most up-to-date uh, data. And if I publish this into the Power BI service, my dashboard will get updated every 15 minutes, or you can configure it to be every 30 minutes, every uh, hour or so, right? So it automatically updates. Uh, do you need gateway? You might still need gateway if your direct query data source is on-prem. If it is not on-prem, you don't need gateway. So gateway need is nothing to do with direct query or the import data. It's just the matter of if your data source is, uh, is on-prem or is it uh, cloud-based. Uh, there are some pros and cons of using uh, direct query, uh, which I can show you in this uh, in this slide. Now this is slide. This is slide. Um, so advantages: you would use direct query for large data sets, no matter what the size of data is, petabytes of data. You don't need to do re data refresh. So scheduled refresh is not required. Disadvantages. Uh, you can only have one single data source. You cannot have like part of data coming from SQL Server and another part of that coming from Excel. Now you can do that with composite mode, which I will talk about that in another video, which is a biggest, um, let's say, improvement you can have on a direct query mode, and it is a recommended one. 
Uh, most of power query transformations are limited. Your modeling is limited. Your DAX calculations is limited. Your uh, Power BI report would perform definitely a slower. So this is not an option that you have to go and choose first. I would still say import data should be your first choice. If the size of data is so big, you cannot fit it in import data, then direct query can be a good option. However, I would highly recommend using direct query with the composite mode, which means that you put aggregations on top of it, you combine it with other data sources, which are import, and you get a very uh, good performing direct query model combined with import data. I'll talk about that in another video. So here you go. This was a video about um, direct query, pros and cons, scenarios to use it, how to use it. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe uh, in our YouTube channel. We have Power BI and AI weekly videos. Um, and if you have any questions, ask us down in the comments below. Thanks.